Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my show Camera Tuesday. In today's episode, we're gonna take a look at Sony APS-C, not Sony full frame, Sony crop sensor camera, specifically A6500. So let's dive right into it. Now before we are look at that specific camera, we have to have a thorough understanding of Sony itself. Now Sony is dominating the world, as in the whole planet, in mirrorless. Now you might be like, okay, how is that? First full frame mirrorless, they have been making a lot of waves. That's the sole reason Canon and Nikon jumped into the mirrorless system. And almost all mobile sensors are Sony mobile sensors. So suffice to say, they are selling like hotcakes. So Sony's uh, imaging division, basically the division that makes the sensor, they're, they're good. And uh, Canon and Nikon also have bought sensors from Sony. So that division, Sony got it. Like Sony is the king in that department and uh, Sony's E-mount, they have two mount system. They have A-mount and E-mount. A-mount is basically like a DSLR, which has a uh, electronic viewfinder and you can buy that. And uh, let's say you buy a full mirrorless system and you're like, okay, I want, I find one less that is very good at A-mount system. There is a, you know, native adapter for it. So be mindful. Don't just be like, okay, you know, I don't have my desired lens in E system. Look at A system. If they have it, awesome and you can natively adapt it. You will get almost everything working. So they have APS-C and full frame in both uh, Sony Alpha series and Sony E series. Uh, now you have to understand before you jump into any sort of mirrorless system, you have to be mindful about the fact how good is the ecosystem. Now when we talk about Sony, Sony is king here. Like because Sony has been making Handycam, Sony have been making VHS, Sony have been making, uh, you know, Betamax, Sony have been making Blu-rays. Sony as a consumer company, it's so big, so vast, so large that Sony single-handedly can start an ecosystem and sustain it. And that's why you have Blu-ray players, not HD DVD players. So, Saying Sony uh, has a very good uh, amount of infrastructure supporting its primary product, it would not be an understatement. Like many of the broadcast station, as in from your news station to movie studios, have used Sony cameras. And uh, not to mention the Star Wars pre uh, prequel trilogy was shot in Sony Full HD camera. At that time, that was groundbreaking. So. Sony as a company, as an ecosystem is big and vast. To give you just a tiny hint of it, how big it is, you must have seen this sort of hot shoe mount. Now, uh, Sony has taken the same technology, like this shoe mount is a ISO 500 series, basically it's standardized, so you can mount any flash. It will trigger it, it will not just do advanced function with it. Sony is like, they took it and they put uh, what we call active connection pins. So there is like 20 pin in it and using that, Right now, even in your old Sony, let's say A6000, you're like, you're happy with it, but you're like, what if I had the ability to connect, uh, you know, my lavalier mic that like I have right now into my camera wirelessly? Buy this. There is a hot shoe compatible Bluetooth receiver and you can just buy, they will give you a whole package receiver and transmission. So, and you plug it on top, no wire going around anywhere. So, ta-da! They have even uh, shotgun mics, no connection required. Like there is no battery in any of these. It's directly being powered from your camera battery. So you only have to worry about one battery source. And uh, uh, how successful Sony is as a camera, you can easily guess it by how many third party accessories are being sold for it. That's why you have ludicrously large amount of docks made for Apple, not for Android, simply because there are so many fragmentation, one will not fit all. But Sony single-handedly is so big that there is this adapter which I find quite intriguing is that uh, many of you know for macro lens, the, if you can't buy a macro lens, all you have to do is just take out your lens and invert it. Now problem with that is like if you have a manual lens, you can adjust the aperture and all that. But if you have electronic lens like these lenses, modern lenses are generally electronic, uh, you can't really do that properly. So there is a company that created a system where you mount this lens backwards onto your camera and it will give you full electronic control. So your XFI data, your uh, image stabilization, all that will work. So suffice to say third party ecosystem and the first party uh, native ecosystem is huge. Like you can even buy something like this uh, if you want like, you know, better onboard, uh, uh, you know, audio recording. And lens wise, they have uh, multiple lens series and their equivalent of L series is what they call G, uh, you know, G, G master lenses. So as a Sony, as an infrastructure, as a third party ecosystem, you don't have to worry about it. So let's look at the subject of this one. Last week I focused on uh, so, uh, Fuji Film X-T3 
this one I want to this is the only competitor that comes even close enough to that is a6500 now it is an old camera it's uh, from December 2016 so at this point it's almost two years old uh, the reason why I'm saying this is the only competitor with all the flaws this camera have this camera gives you gorgeous as in even today industry uh, leading video quality out of it because it's taking its 24 megapixel and it's like okay let's take all the data from the sensor as in 6k video image is coming out then it's compressing that to 4k so you are getting crisp low noise high color high dynamic range uh, 4k video the 4k footage that comes out of this camera it's gorgeous and not to mention they are not even compressing that 4k to very uh, serious extent of course they are compressing they're not giving you raw file but they are not compressing it very uh, you know very severely because you can get 4k in your mobile phone but it barely has like you know 15 mbps to 35 mbps this puppy get, goes upwards of 100 mbps uh, so there's enough data in your that 4k that itself is very good because it's compressed from 6k uh, from and not to mention from that uh, 4k file to your memory card it's going up of 100 mbps so it's quite good beefy video file that you are getting out of your camera and it's uh, it has color it has range it has like if you put it in adobe premiere and you want to color correct it it will give you a lot of leeway because the format is so big like you know the data so much data is there so at, the, at this moment if you want to get flawless aps-c uh, you know 4k video format nothing comes close to this not even xt3 the reason why xt3 is even good is simply because they have better color science so unless you do color correction on this puppy uh, xt3 right out the box that will look better but if you do color correction on both then you will find this to be uh, outperforming that simply because the fact that it's downscaling from 6k now the mount system is e-mount uh, you know the sony a series mount so if you buy a aps-c lens you don't have to worry about it like it will not work in your full frame it will work in your full frame but the moment you mount this lens on your full frame camera it will trigger a dx crop mode basically it's gonna crop your full frame so you don't have to worry about it and if you can override that also so you will get very uh, you know uh, spy camera kind of view where you have full black vignetting and uh, one thing odd about it is that it um, to do cost cutting method they put the they have only one door where you can put the battery and sd card so they don't have independent sd card everything f uh, fun and games and it also has my personal favorite feature it's like if i can get uh, nikon and canon to introduce one feature without adding cost like without adding too much cost one feature that i would wait it's not ibis it's not a uh, flip out screen or you know my headphone jar it's usb charging the battery for some reason my super expensive 800d like it's expensive for me you may be very rich but it's very expensive for me it took me like almost two years of my job saving to get this camera with a good lens so i can't charge the battery and uh, sony by default gives you the ability to uh, you know directly charge your battery in the camera so it's almost like a mobile phone you can just uh, plug in and forget about it it will charge now uh, you, many of you might be hating about the fact that sony does not give you uh, something like this which we call battery cradle basically you put a battery here now i don't hate that fact simply because a that only increases shipping cost and it's only useful if you have multiple battery if you have one battery that is useless because if you, your battery is discharged, your camera is pointless. So might as well use it. Now. Might as well use it as a battery grid. It has the infrastructure there. Just use it. Like for some reason, stop polluting the planet. Stop, you know, like wasting money on this. Like Canon and Nikon and freaking everyone else. Like just, just give USB charging. Thankfully, Fuji does that. And uh, Sony also does that. And Sony ensured uh, like almost all their full frames supports this so this is very useful feature so like if you are a simple guy you like i don't want to do photography you know as a living if i just want to do some videography and uh, you know i want to get some good photos and i want to have an experience that is more or less similar to my mobile phone this will give you simply because you don't have to like okay open everything you know put a card in card reader then put the battery in that it has a wireless connectivity also so you can directly dump the file into your mobile phone while you are doing that you can also charge it so all things combined this is quite useful camera and not to mention the quality video quality is just unmatched so quite good thing for given the fact that it's kind of old but be mindful it does have ibus so don't go for uh, 6300 uh, go for 6500 so 6500 have ibus basically the sensor itself moves 
So should you buy this camera or not? Should you choose this over uh, basically uh, Fuji film? The answer come down to one simple faction. I would say simply please wait because it's already two years. They have to release, Sony have to release a new one. And because Sony has delayed their current launch, if they're supposed to announce this thing in Photokina, they haven't done it. And they flat out saying that we are delaying it because we want to upgrade it. There's a very good chance they will improve that uh, camera to a certain extent. Now that camera has UHS one card slot basically slow buffer even though in a uh, buffer itself is quite big uh, as in it can take upwards of 80 to uh, 100 raw files it is awesome for APS-C camera it is like mind-boggling for APS-C camera the only camera that can compete with uh, that kind of performance is uh, Nikon D500 because it uses XQD and UHS-2 so all things com considered it's kind of awesome camera but for some reason they chipped out on the card system although back in that day UHS-2 was not that popular so I do understand it so if in the new version they will make UHS-2 will they put dual card slot I don't think so because Sony does have wasted it they don't want to make their APS-C so good that people are like yeah I'll just buy the full frame lens and you know just uh, buy an APS-C sensor now on top of that like let's say you can even live with that you can't live with the fact that it overheats now I have only had one time of fault with uh, my camera where it simply was stopping the recording mid uh, you know recording and turns out the mic it was my card's fault that's why now at this point I am like yeah I need dual card slot before that I was like yeah I'm using it but now yeah I need dual card slot so I changed the card it's working now in Sony you can't be like you know that blind faith you can't put on your equipment simply because not only it has single card slot but it also has overheating issue and the biggest problem with that is not predictable it's not like okay if you are recording 4k video footage for let's say uh, half an hour it will overheat it's random so you could have a scenario where your camera is working flawlessly you are like you know taking a lot of photos everything is fine you are shooting some small videos and at the end you are like you know uh, want to make a vlog of yourself and you will start recording and boom it overheats and it does not have a flip out screen so you will not see it whether it has stopped recording or not so that overheating is random so you will never know when it happens and uh, people have taken five six a, a, a six thousand uh, a six five hundred where all of them are behaving differently even though with the same system same uh, you know scenario same shooting same time everything is same it's just randomly uh, you know giving overheating issues so counting on that camera is not possible like is it good for photography yeah more than good enough but if photography is your factor like if you are making a living out of it like you want to make sure that people get good quality photos from you and you're getting paid for it i would urge you to look into d500 it's a bit more expensive than this but not to mention the lens lineup is you know got uh, awesome basically and uh, focus system will run circles around this even though this has a you know fancier autofocus system nikon's autofocus system is so good that it can focus on wildlife and sports without even worrying about it and not to mention it has three dimensional tracking so uh, if your character is like you know running diagonally to your sensor uh, because of the shallow depth of field your field is always like this so you can't make your lens field go like this so Nikon can pre-calculate okay it's moving through my shallow depth of field like this it can pre-adjust the lens and then focus on it so that's their uh, 3d tracking system it's uh, surprisingly good that's the sole reason Nikon is even in this race of you know Nikon versus Canon because Canon has almost as good as autofocus but Nikon is completely different when it comes to autofocus now be mindful uh, what I'm talking about here is so little it's like you take 100 photos Canon will give you 90 photos on focus and uh, you shoot 100 with uh, Nikon Nikon will give you 98 photos in focus and yeah, that's a lucky estimate so uh, do not think like Nikon or Canon has a gap but if you're jumping from Sony to Nikon you would be like holy damn in viewfinder not live screen live screen you will shoot yourself so that's overheating is very painful like you can't count on your equipment to work so for this reason I cannot truly recommend this for anything like you can take it for wedding shooting like uh, wedding photography no problem but if you did wedding video and randomly at that moment it stopped recording what you're gonna do and it will not let you record again it like it's not like okay it stopped press again re start recording again it will not let you do it unless it you know uh, clears up of uh, buffer and temperature goes down so for this reason please be mindful of this and on top of that all that is acceptable for you know your average Joe but the bad native lens collection was the my final car I was like almost uh, you know um, 
सो विलिंग बैडली वॉन्टिंग टू बाय दिस लेंस बेसिकली दिस इज जी मास्टर लेंस इट्स एफ फोर लेंस एटीन टू सेवन हंड्रेड समथिंग and the benefit of that is this is completely internal nothing moves in or out so even the zoom is powered zoom as you can see you can rotate this ring it's electronically coupled so you can rotate it i wanted this lens so badly for my you know camera but uh, then i realized all the camera uh, lens that is there in uh, basically sony system all of them have very 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 bad uh, basically distortion some have pin cushion distortion this one which has zeiss label on it like you know 18 to 1 uh, 135 this has zeiss branding into it it has so bad uh, you know distortion that on wide end it flat out does not even cover the full sensor like if you take the photo from it and edit the jpeg uh, edit the raw from third party software because they will not let you disable uh, you know lens correction simply because lens are so bad and like this lens has uh, relatively better this one flat was the only time i saw a first party lens not able to cover the sensor so if you have ibis the system will be amplified because if the sensor moved even a little bit the corners are gone like that's why everybody was like uh, we don't understand why this lens supposed to be brighter sharper and it's coming as a replacement of kit lens why the heck it has a dull uh, you know edges simply because the sensor is trying to you know stretch things so i'm shocked like even in this at 50 mm it has pin portion distortion so bad that you will be like if you ever saw the footage directly out of this uh, you will be blown away like how the how bad these lenses are including this one which is a multi thousand dollar lens like 3000 dollar lens this also has very bad distortion now you might be like okay if these are so bad why the heck nobody is saying about it simply because sony does not let you disable the system basically they will not let you disable the auto correction and it does work in video so you will never notice it but uh, after seeing it like now i can't i can't unsee it like you are telling me that zeiss branding is done sony branding is done on a first party system and they are like they are okay with a system which has at 18 mm flat out does not even cover the lens like you know cover the sensor area and that's aps c system it's not like you know freaking uh, full frame or medium format so it's just unacceptable even in this lens the pin portion distortion is so bad you will be shocked and uh, uh, the only reason i think uh, they are even selling like hotcakes is simply because uh, most people are not concerned about it and i do understand like if somebody said like uh, i have a sony aps c system i would urge them to buy this lens because a it's priced very well b it has power zoom so if you are doing video it's awesome c because the lens does not protrude out or in you know the full size of this and so if you put it in a gimbal your gimbal will not become unbalanced because you know lens is moving outside of your uh, format like this becomes very tall when you zoom on in so that will throw off your gimbal this will not do that i mean like it will do a little bit because lens element is still moving but overall it's more or less the same so for this reason i would urge you to before you buy the sony aps c system uh please consider directly buying the full frame lens and uh, upgrading your body whenever you can in the future or if you are really truly focused on aps you may look into uh, fuji system or you can simply be like you know buy nikon or canon if photography is your core not videography photography is your core nikon d500 will satisfy you so uh, at this point i will simply ask you to stop do not buy right now wait for the next iteration they may make it better because they are seeing a threat to uh, their lineup simply coming from fuji so they may stop uh, so they may be like okay let's let's truly put something good out there who knows so this was my presentation on sony a6 uh, 500 i hope you liked it or learned from it in that case please leave a like if you didn't don't worry about it you can dislike it i would urge you to leave a comment what you want to see in the next episode of camera tuesday and please subscribe share with your friends if you are free press the bell icon and as always thanks for watching